My name is Dr. Daniel Fox, and I'm a licensed psychologist in the state of Texas and an expert in the area of personality disorders. And today I wanted to talk about jealousy and envy and how that can impact or affect uh, individuals with borderline personality disorder or those with borderline personality disorder traits. So what we'll do first is let's talk about what envy is and what jealousy is. So envy is a two-person situation, whereas jealousy is a three-person situation. Now let me explain that a little bit. So, so envy is a reaction to lacking something. So you may see somebody and they, they have something that you want, and so you are envious of that person. And jealousy is a reaction to the threat of losing something or someone. Okay? So it's something, jealousy comes from what you have and it becomes a loss. Okay? You're afraid of losing what you have, whereas envy, you see that someone else has something. And this can factor in to individuals with borderline personality disorder. Sometimes they can be triggers, uh, other types of manifestations. So what I want to do is uh, I want to go through the different criteria related to borderline personality disorder and talk about how they fit into jealousy uh, or envy or jealousy and envy. Okay? So first we'll start out with this first component which is this frantic effort to avoid real or imagined abandonment. And you can see where jealousy factors right into this one because it's, these individuals tend to be very jealous because they're afraid of losing typically their loved one and they're afraid of the individual, that object of other that, that they value very much and they become very jealous if they're not calling them when they expect them to, they're not responding to texts or emails or phone calls when the individual who's along that borderline spectrum expects them to. So they become very jealous. Uh, they may check their phone, they may spy on them, uh, they may hire private detectives. Uh, these, are all, uh, these are things that my clients have told me that they have done uh, because jealousy is, has gotten hold of them because they're very jealous of losing that object that, that they value so much. So they become very frantic in an effort not to lose that individual. Now the next criteria, this is sort of that identity disturbance and it's marked in persistently unstable self-image or sense of self. And I think here we see that envy factors in into this one. So in that individuals along that borderline spectrum that they see what other people have and they try to mold themselves and their life into what they envy. So someone else may have a nice car or, and this happens a lot on, on social media, is that a lot of my clients, they forget that social media really only encompasses the maximum of 20% of someone else's life, right? So we think that someone shows that a vacation or a new car or uh, they go to a nice restaurant or they're out and about, they're doing great things and fun things. The individual who's along the borderline spectrum may be envious of that, believing that those pictures and those presentations make up that person's life without realizing and considering that it's really only 20%. So what happens is you have that identity disturbance in that they may try to fit their life into, <clears throat> pardon me, into that other individual. So they may be envious of what that other individual has. And that can be really problematic because that can spur a depressive episode, uh, anxiety, panic attacks, other types of issues other than just that identity disturbance. And we're gonna go criteria, criteria, even though we know that these criteria do overlap and they certainly um, show up at different times and together and singly and in, in different patterns as well. So it's important to recognize that, but <clears throat> to really address this issue completely, um, we wanna break them up just to make sure that everything's clear for you, okay? So that's that identity disturbance and we see that envy really sort of um, can promote that and, and fill that and propel that, that individual um, about their confusion about who they are, where they're going, their goal setting and uncertainty. Uh, about that. So the next one, this is a pattern of unstable and intense interpersonal relationships with extremes of idealization and devaluation. 
So <clears throat> what we see here is, is, is that there's actually components of jealousy and envy in this one. And due to that sort of, that unstable and intense interpersonal relationship, so it becomes the individual who's along the borderline spectrum, they, they try harder to keep that object of other, right? That object, remember we talked earlier about abandonment. Well, now it becomes, it has a sense of desperation, this drive to keep this object of other close to them and they want to stay connected to them so what happens is is that they have they have periods of idealization where they think they're wonderful and they fit perfectly in their life and uh, everything's going great there's a lot of passion there might be a lot of good experiences and it's this intensity and how wonderful they are and then quickly when they're not calling when things aren't um, uh, falling through as they expected, then you drop to this uh, this devaluation, and jealousy can is can be a component that drives that individual to both. It's that jealousy that someone is going to steal this this relationship object, this love object away, and in order for you to keep hold of this, then you being that individual along the personality, um, the borderline personality spectrum, is that. So you, you act out and you, you start to see this person is great and then when you, and there are small factors or there could be large factors that then you devalue that individual. So it becomes that fluctuation, that intense interpersonal relationship. This can be with friends too. That maybe you have a friend who uh, he or she meets somebody new so they're hanging out with that person because of all the novelty and you become very jealous and you think, oh, what a horrible person. Whereas maybe hours before, or days before, you said, oh, we're, we're the closest we could ever be. Um, envy can, can feed in, into this as well, in that we start to see that these other individuals, that they have these, these components or these factors that if you had, well, then your life would be perfect. And the person who's with you would be would recognize how perfect everything is and you would be with that perfect person so then you wouldn't need or you wouldn't have that intensity now certainly the jealousy is a stronger component here but i think that there are components of, of envy as well so we have to recognize that that in this particular criteria that that they're both overlap that they're both present and they can both spur or be triggers for those unstable relationships friendships romantic relationships as i mentioned just a moment ago. And we go on to the next one, and this is those recurrent uh, suicidal behaviors, gestures, threats, some self-mutilating, things of that nature. And jealousy, again, can be a big component, and so can envy. Now, jealousy is that perhaps you're afraid of losing this individual, so you engage in a self-mutilative or a self-harming behavior to, to try to validate to yourself if this person really cares about you, and all of that confusion. So it's that jealousy that someone is going to take away your love object, so you need to put them through a test or some type of, of sequence so that you can feel um, calm and stable and connected to, to this person so that jealousy can subside whereas envy envy is much more well so this person has something and you may believe that you'll never have it which maybe you see again we can go back to that social media and that you see that that these people have these trips and cars and relationships and all these things and forgetting that it's only 20 percent so that can drive you to a depressive episode an anxious episode a panic attack and that drives you to engage in a suicidal behavior or self-harming behavior or a gesture as well so um, jealousy and envy factor in, into this one uh, as well. So the next one, we talk about that uh, affective instability. And a lot of times for folks along that borderline spectrum, that affective instability, this can be due to that reactivity and mood, um, which can be like intense uh, dysphoria, which is like severe depressive symptoms. Um, it can also be like irritability, anxiety, um, which and th these can sometimes last like a few hours. They can also um, sometimes but rarely only last like a few days. And jealousy and envy can spur that, can bring these, th these factors into play. Again, that jealousy, it goes to that you're afraid of losing this important love object. Uh, something occurs and that effective instability kicks off and you have this depressive episode, this panic attack. Uh, perhaps envy kicks in and you see someone online or someone you don't like or 
or someone who you do wish that you had their life or parts of their life and they're showing all these pictures on Instagram and Facebook and all these other social media things and how great and happy they seem and you're envious of that person and that causes you to fall into a depressive episode. Don't forget that 20% though because that 80% is the real life. Facebook is only 20%. Facebook or social media is only 20%. And then the next component is that chronic feelings of emptiness. And with the chronic feelings of emptiness, again, this is that jealousy and envy component. And that, and that emptiness can sometimes come from the jealousy or fear of losing that individual, of losing that object of love that you hold so dear. And you may have the sense of emptiness that, I, that you don't have enough to fill up the relationship to keep that person with you. So when someone gives them a little more attention or somebody is, is reactive in a positive way or your partner or friend or whomever it may be is, is laughing with someone else, you become very jealous and that spurs this chronic feeling of emptiness and reminds you of some of those, those um, the core structure that, that, that you're dealing with, that, that you're working with. And emptiness is often a, a core content issue that I work with with a lot of my clients as well. And envy, again, is, is and you can imagine that it's looking uh, at someone else and what they have and how happy they are or perceived to be and all the things that they have that perhaps you want. And that envy sparks this, uh, this chronic sense of emptiness or, or kicks off this sense of emptiness. So again, this is another one um, of jealousy and envy. Now next, we have uh, that inappropriate intense anger or difficulty controlling anger. Now this can be um, with uh, often having sort of temper displays and acting out in an angry fashion, a lot of um, constant anger, uh, physical fights perhaps, things like that, and jealousy as you can imagine is that, right, is that you expected that your love object or this individual, you know, whom, whom you love a lot or whether it's a friend who you want to keep close or whatever it is, that they don't respond to your texts on time or they can't go to the movies or they have to work late or whatever it is and you become very agitated and angry at this person because you're you're jealous of of what they're doing afraid of losing that person so you engage in all of this intense behavior with the objective to keep them close but anger tends to repel most people so it becomes engaging in an activity that ends up getting you the opposite of what you want and the thing about anger is is that it becomes a physiological expression right so so we we have the anger episode once we act that out and it's all this emotion and all this adrenaline we actually get a bit of a payoff from an anger or rage episode because we have a sense of calm because we're a little tired out and what happens is is that it puts us on this cycle to be angry again and sometimes uh, once the anger episode subsides uh, the individual may and then come back when they know it's safe or, or they know they're not going to be yelled at or hurt or have things thrown at them or whatever it may be. And so that jealousy can certainly spur uh, one of those, those anger episodes, of those uh, temper reactions. Envy can as well, is that you see that someone has something, uh, maybe you, you perceive them to be flaunting it, maybe they are flaunting it, uh, and you can become very angry. Uh, perhaps you grab that item if it is an item, or that person is, you feel like that they're bragging about their new, um, their new job or a new uh, promotion or whatever it may be, and that really sort of ticks you off and you engage uh, in an anger episode with that individual. Okay, so jealousy and envy factor into this one as well. And the last one we're going to talk about, this is that transient stress-related paranoid ideation uh, that a lot of individuals along the borderline spectrum do experience. Now, this occurs most frequently in response to a real or imagined abandonment. So it goes back to that first component. But what this is, because of the transient and stress-related and the paranoia, so we're, we become hyper-focused on the fear of losing an individual. Whereas before we were engaging in frantic efforts of the jealousy 
that was driving it. Now it's more of a cognitive process with paranoid. You are paranoid that the person is cheating on you or the friend no longer likes you or the friend is losing interest in you or your child isn't giving you enough love or attention or what you expect. So you become very jealous of the child's friend or even, or even the child, maybe the your significant other is, you feel is getting more attention. So that jealousy and that paranoid um, beliefs are starting to come into play, which we know distorts how you see the world. And as I mentioned in earlier uh, videos as well, is that you have this BPD lens, this borderline personality disorder lens that distorts the accuracy of, of, of how you see the world around you. So it's important to be aware of that paranoia can be a big component of that BPD lens that reinforces that borderline personality disorder. And uh, I have plans to do a video on, on BPD lens uh, down the road. Now what about envy? So envy can certainly cause these, this paranoid reaction or this paranoid ideation. And what that is, again, it goes back to you're seeing these individuals, things that you want or you feel that you deserve, and you become envious. And that paranoia can be that you're constantly vigilant of what that individual has. Perhaps you have beliefs that they're going to um, take from you so that they can be more successful or show or what they're showing is their success, which you feel illuminates your failures. So it's that paranoid of what this person is going to show next, what they're going to do next, how they're going to react. So that becomes is this paranoid ideation. Now what I want to talk about is, so when we talk about jealousy, well, what's, what is some of the research showing? Well, interestingly, when we look at some of the uh, jealousy and borderline personality disorder is that we find that individuals with higher levels of borderline personality disorder, which are features and traits and stuff, that it's associated with an increased level in cyberbullying, right? And that is picking on people uh, online, uh, maybe you know causing them difficulty. Um, you're being aggressive through electronic means, so it's cyberbullying them. Uh, so we see this, and jealousy has been found to kick off a lot of the cyberbullying behavior for those that have these borderline personality disorder traits. If you've experienced this or if you yourself have engaged in this, it might be interesting to include some of that uh, in the comments, but also mention how you dealt with it if you're not doing it anymore, which could be helpful for people that maybe do engage in some of the cyberbullying behavior because they're being triggered, their borderline personality characteristics are being triggered, their traits are being triggered and they're engaging in cyberbullying. So what have you done to manage this as well? Because I'm going to talk now about what we can do to try to help you manage that sense of, of jealousy and envy. And the first thing is I want you to recognize the difference between wanting to be in a relationship. Notice that all of these have to do relationships. They're not all romantic relationships, but they're all relationships to others. This fear of loss or this fear of connecting or what other people have, but they're about relationships. And it's, it's important to recognize or to, to try to put yourself in relationships you want to be in. If you feel like you need to be in the relationship, that is a relationship that's worth exploring. What is it about it that you feel you need? Can you, can you give that to yourself? Can you give yourself the sense of satisfaction, the sense of fulfillment that maybe you are dependent or reliant on this relationship to give you. And what are those components and how can you go about getting them yourself? And this is why working with a mental health provider can be really important to explore this and to, to do this for yourself. Another component, particularly uh, directly related to jealousy and envy, explore the root of those things. What does it come from? and identify what those jealousy and envy triggers are. Is it uh, maybe the things that people say or the things that people do or the things that people have and what are those triggers? And recognizing those triggers can help you understand or augment your jealousy and envy responses. And that's what we want to do. We don't want to go from a jealousy and envy um, stimulus to a jealous and envy response. We want to build that distance. And this is where working with a mental health provider can help, is to lengthen the process, the processing of stimulus and response. And that's exactly what we want to do. Because if you could determine a more healthy and adaptive response, you'll have more healthy and adaptive outcomes. And that's exactly what, what we want to do. That's what therapy is, is all about. And 
what we'd like to do, ideally, is to build yourself and, and your life in this jealousy and envy proof. And the way we kind of do that is that we sort of strive for your goals, right? Know what they are, um, what you want, what are some things that you want. And I know that a lot of folks that have uh, borderline personality disorder or personality disorder traits often struggle with identifying what they want. And you don't have to have every answer today, is that you can give yourself time, be patient with yourself, and figure that out as you continue to explore this. Um, try to define your goals as clear as possible, especially in regards to what you want. Where do you see yourself a week from now and a month from now? Start there and start building those, those goals for yourself and defining that. Because what happens is once we have a greater sense of self and we're more comfortable with who we are, we have less jealousy and less envy. And I know that for a lot of folks, my, my clients uh, have a lot of difficulty with this because the, a lot of them are on the borderline spectrum or have borderline personality disorder, it is hard for them to do that. It is hard for them to identify what they want, what their goals are, but it's really, it's worth your, your time and energy. It really is of slowing down, identifying what your goals are, uh, doing a worksheet. There's a lot of worksheets on, online about goal definition and, and how to achieve it and stepping it out as best you can. And these are things that you absolutely can do. Um, I really believe that and I've seen my, my clients who are along the borderline spectrum and with traits as well and just achieve amazing, amazing things. And I know that, that, uh, that you or someone who may be experiencing this disorder can as well. So it's important to recognize that. Uh, I want to thank you for your time and attention. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, you can check out some of my other ones. Uh, I'm in a, a different lo location today. I'm in uh, one of my offices here, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it, a little, little different look. So uh, hopefully you liked it, and hopefully you will subscribe, and I appreciate your time very much. Thank you, and take care. Bye-bye.